Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Uh, if you don't know, this show is now live. Uh, let's see, I usually, I usually post somewhere around 4, 4.30 in the morning. It's 4.30 in the morning now, 6.27.13. Um, long before Rush Limbaugh is out of bed. Glenn Beck is still... And I am out here with the news. So make sure you join me. Let me see if I have anybody uh, trying. If I miss you when you come on, that's not on purpose. Some, it's supposed to ding, but like everything Google does, and then doesn't always work. But um, I don't, if you want to come on, join me, and I will do my best to make sure that I know that you are there. Listen to what this idiot, bonehead Obama said. I swear. I had thought that Jimmy Carter was going to be the worst president in my lifetime. No. That award is going to go to Barack Obama. President Obama was playing to his most extreme green consistency in his climate and energy speech at Georgetown University today. Blasting global warming skeptics as Flat Earth Society ostriches with their head in the sand. President Obama said that he does not have patience for anyone who denies that this is a real problem. We don't have time for a meeting with the Flat Earth Society, the idiot, excuse me, Obama said. Sticking our head in the sand might make us feel safer, but it is not going to protect you from the coming storm. Idiot, excuse me, Obama claimed and that the call for urgent action and to stem the threat of global warming is based on the overwhelming judgment of science, uh, quote there, of chemistry, of physics, and millions of measurements, end quote. The, idiot, the president apparently has not gotten the memos. His, his Oval Office staff, it said, must be keeping him in the dark concerning the very important developments recently in climate science and even more significant developments in climate and energy policies. And I'm going to read a lot of this that William Jasper wrote here at the New American because it's good and it's, it proves that global warming is a lie. There's a million videos I have up about how I proved it to you. Over and over and over and over again, I've proven it to you. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time reading, and I let regular viewers know I don't spend a lot of time reading into the camera. Usually you get more of my insight. What I'm going to do is let the information prove itself to you even if you think I'm the worst reporter and commentator that ever lived, it will still be proven by the end of this article that man-made global warming is a lie. As we reported yesterday, it says some of the leading voices in the global warming alarmist choir have been admitting that the climate catastrophes predicted by the computer models have not materialized and that the alleged scientific consensus, consensus is a fraud. The influential British journal The Economist, hardly an underground rag, suggested in an article on June 20th that, quote, the public has been systematically deceived, end quote, for years with all of this talk of certainty and consensus, consensus, why am I having trouble with that word today? About dire consequences attributed to man-made or anthropogenic global warming, that would be man-made global warming, and the supposed urgent need for drastic, costly, painful public policies to address the crisis. I told you that I could prove it to you, and I did. I'm letting them prove it to you, and they're a lot more wordy than I am. The planet is warming. Human activity is contributing to it, idiot. I keep misreading that. Obama said in his Georgetown speech, the president seems to be unaware that even top climate alarmists have admitted that there has been no evidence of global warming in the last 15 years. For you weekend fans, that's over a decade. This absence of warming has been the source of much head-scratching, debating and theorizing in the climate activist circles. 
As we have reported, it says the UK Met Office and Professor Phil Jones, the former director of the Climate Research Unit, and the University of East Anglia are among the many alarmists, that would be people that thought this was true prior, one of the many alarmists who have been forced to acknowledge the reality of the lack, as in none, the lack of any warming trend or crisis. The New American's recent articles on the false consensus lists dozens of top scientists who have defected from the alarmist ranks and provide links showing literally thousands of scientists that somehow Obama doesn't know about who contest the warming theories the President Obama champions on the basis for his energy policy proposals. Um, Spain. Listen, this is what happened to Spain when they went green. These are some great facts here. For every one green job financed by Spanish taxpayers, that means paid for, 2.2 jobs were lost as an opportunity cost. One out of every 10 green contract jobs were in maintenance and operation for already working positions and are only sustainable in an expensive environment related to high subsidies. That is your taxes paying for it. And other, I mean, otherwise, it makes no money. Since 2000, Spain has paid $75,778 for each green job. In other words, they're losing their asses off. Those programs resulted in a destruction of nearly 110,500 jobs. Lastly, each green megawatt installed on average, on average destroyed 5.39 jobs elsewhere in the economy. And in the case of solo photovoltaics, the number reaches 8.99 jobs per megawatt hour installed. So now they're losing money with things and I don't even know what they are. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read one more on this because it's very, very important. One more paragraph. And then I'm not going to do a lot of reading. You, I, like I say, I know you guys don't tune in to see me read. But this is important, and I've just let a lot of other people prove what I've been saying and proving in other ways now for over a year and a half, approaching two years in August. But it's a lie. James Lovelock, considered by many to be one of the founding father scientists of the environmentalist movement into the UK, has been unsparring in his criticism of wind power and his formal global warming alarmism. In other words, he doesn't believe it anymore which he now says grossly exaggerated the non-crisis of climate change. Professor Fritz Verenholt, one of Germany's, you'd never know by the name, one of Germany's most famous Greens and longtime AGW, that means man-made global warming, alarmist, and champion for renewable energies has likewise admitted to having been very, very wrong on these matters. Like Lovelock and many leading scientists, Valerin Holt is calling for an end to the climate change hysteria and an end to the green lobby attacks on conventional fossil fuels. Bingo! Now, not only have I proved it, I've just read the words of a whole lot of other people that proved it. When are we going to wake up to the fact that man is not warming the planet? I do like a lot of these wind power idea things because it keeps a lot of the toxins out of the air that I do believe are giving us lung cancer. But we are not ready to leave fossil fuels behind yet. We don't have the know-how to do that yet without destroying our economies. And we are destroying our economies for no reason because man is not warming the planet. Uh, Infowars.com, Steve Watson, Donald Trump says Snowden should be assassinated. I think Donald Trump should now and forever, uh, for the last time, be laughed out of all considerations for any public office. He's not fit to be a dog catcher. He wouldn't make a good meter maid in Mayberry. Donald Trump, a man who has previously, and may once again, I hope not, tout himself as a presidential candidate, believes that the American justice system is too slow and cumbersome to deal with whistleblowers like NSA Edward Snowden. 
you know, the man that stuck his neck out for the good of all of us. And I know that a lot of people are questioning uh, whether or not he's a double agent. I don't buy it. Well, he's an agent for Ecuador, he's an agent for Hong Kong and China, he's an agent for Russia. If you read that in a James Bond script, you'd say it was the worst James Bond ever. Yet in real life, we're supposed to believe this? No, I really do believe Snowden's story. Um, a good article, if you don't, or if you're questioning it to some degree, might be to check out the work of Anthony Court, who is uh, the Court Report on the Media Speaks, same channel as I. He is leaning, I think he's leaning, at least he's reporting on it. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But I do believe he's leaning towards this. I happen to think Edward Snowden went where he went because he had to. He let the world know that America was spying on them. All of them. We're supposed to be the beacon of freedom and Fourth Amendment. And we were spying on the world. And then we were dumb enough to tell China that they should extradite him here so we could jail and or kill him. And we should punish him when we were caught spying on them. And I'm not talking about their government. I understand that that has to happen. Let's face it. I'm not going to be real here. But they were spying on the regular citizens. Labeling Snowden a spy, Trump went on Fox News to advocate his immediate execution. In a vomit-inducing, well put Steve Watson, interview with Fox and Friends, Trump, in his infinite wisdom, stated, You know, spies in the old days used to be executed. The guy has become a, a hero in some circles. Now I will say, with the passage of time, even people that were sort of liking him were trying to go on his side or maybe dropping out. We have to get him back, and we have to get him back fast. It could take months or it could take years, but that would be pathetic, Donald noted. Uh, Donald, the only thing pathetic is you. And, and again, if there is any proof that comes out, much like I said about Anonymous, that uh, this is somehow a plant, then I will revoke my support. But as it stands, I do not. Blatantly advocating that Snowden be assassinated, Trump suggested that the U.S. would, be somehow, would somehow cease to exist should he be allowed to live and divulge the secret information on government surveillance. Let me say something. As it stands right now, I have no problem whatsoever with Eric Snowden. Um, now let's look at that. I mean, remember, Trump is the one who, uh, well, listen to this idiot. And I mean, he, yeah, he was partially right, uh, partially, he is right on the birther issue. The every, every, every copy that we have seen thus far of Obama's birth certificate is in fact fake, and you can prove that forever. I have a degree in this. I, I can speak on this on my own. I have a degree in interactive media technology. I had an entire class in nothing but Photoshop. I could make Photoshop sing and dance. And once you've had that training, and I'm not going to go into how, if you want to know how, let me know in my comment line, and I will give you a nice, long, boring explanation. But if you've been trained in this, then you can spot fakes, and it's fake. I, I can prove it to anybody that knows anything about Photoshop. Otherwise, I'm just going to be talking and all my listeners are going to go. But trust me, anybody that knows anything about Photoshop can prove it. <clears throat> Despite him being the most constitutionally sound presidential candidate, the idiot Donald Trump called Paul a joke candidate and belittled his libertarian outlook on foreign policy and saying Paul did not care about foreign affairs such as if Iran has a nuclear weapon that can wipe out Israel, I think Israel is more than able to take care of itself. Um, from Karen Silkwood to Michael Hastings, something is wrong. This is HomelandSecurityUS.com. Douglas Hagman. Douglas J. Hagman made me really upset here because he made an analogy in the title that he hardly alluded to. So, since I've been babbling on forever, if you want to read the article, and you should, um, go do so. But what I'm going to do is mention the connection to Karen Silkwood that he only mentions for one paragraph. Um, oh, I'm like all excited, too, because, and you'll find out why in a minute. Uh, could this be what we might be witnessing, uh, and that would be uh, assassinations of whistleblowers? to truth seekers who dare take on the power of the royalty who are in power from the strange car accident that took the life of whistleblower Karen Silkwood in 1974 
to the Michael Hastings wreck of 2013 and the countless other conveniently coincidental deaths in between, could we be witnessing the deliberate purging of those who are desperately seeking truth? Karen Silkwood died the same way. And I'm like Joe Nuclear when it comes to Fukushima, uh, uh, Mavec, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, the recent mess we're having on the Great Lakes. When it comes to nuclear anything, I'm like the go-to guy, and I didn't even catch this. Karen Silkwood, uh, for those of you that never read a book, get the movie Silkwood. It's so good that it's one of the first movies I showed my girlfriend when we got together because I was trying to teach her how bad radioactive elements are and I was using it as a teaching tool in reference to Fukushima and the extent the nuclear industry will go to cover something up. And unfortunately, I've just given you the end of the movie, but it's worth it. Go and see the movie. And since I've given you the ending, I'm just going to tell you about it. But trust me, it doesn't matter if you know the ending. The point is, there's a lot that can be learned here that I can't give you in a two-minute video segment. Um, Karen Silkwood was a hero who worked at a place that processed plutonium. Much of it was being stolen. They had lax security. People were being poisoned and it was being covered up. And she exposed it. What they did was poisoned her with it in her whole house, poisoned her family, and ultimately uh, the incidents surrounding it are insane. Even Wendy o. Williams of the Plasmatics had done a, a segment and a song about it. It basically murdered her. They, they either created or caused or otherwise uh, manipulated a car accident, a fatal car accident, killed Karen Silkwood for exposing uh, so many atrocities that they got the plant, uh, plant shut down, thankfully. But uh, look, go see Silkwood and uh, look at the similarities. Go to Wiki, look at uh, some of the links it will send you to. The more homework you do on the way that Karen Silkwood died, it's like a mirror for Michael Hastings. Uh, I, I must say, uh, Douglas J. Hagman, a great, great correlation there, but you really missed the boat on uh, covering the story. I hate, I hate to say it, but you did. Um, Nitro Pack. Go to the mediaspeaks.com and click on the Nitro Pack ad. Um, it's Nitro hyphen pack, but if you click to it from our site, I'm going to be dead honest. You click to it from our site and it helps us. And when you buy something that way, it helps us even more. So please help the media speaks, and I'm going to give you I'm going to give you some amazing options here. Check this out. I'm letting all the other uh, hosts on the media speaks talk about the prepping. I have spent all summer, and I'm going to keep doing so, <clears throat> letting you know what they have here. If you're not a prepper, am I saying prepping is bad? No, I'm not. I'm appealing to the people that just want to have fun. It's summer. You want to have fun. Check this out. Space all-weather sleeping bag, and normally 13 bucks most places, they've got it for $8.99. Survival sleeping bag, $6.99. When's the last time you ever went camping and you had a sleeping bag for $6.99? Uh, maybe you want something really, I don't know, this is funny. High Peak Summit 2 O-Rated Mummy Sleeping Bag, $59.99, I guess if you're going to stay in the tundra. Um, what's the one? I mean, there's so many. Let me pick one more. High Peak Sleeping Bag, uh, Kodiak, $20, $69.95. I mean, this thing uh, looks like it has everything but wheels and a motor. Go to Mediaspeaks.com, click on Nitro Pack, buy something, and help the Media Speaks. And get one hell of an awesome sleeping bag as well. Um, the two more articles that I want to get to, Ron Paul writes, what we have learned from Afghanistan. And I'm going to read just a tiny bit of this because when Ron Paul speaks, we listen. And InfoWars has this. Uh, last week, the Taliban opened an office in Doha, Qatar with the U.S. government's blessing. They raised the Taliban flag at the opening ceremony and referred to Afghanistan as the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. The name they used when they were in charge of the U.S. 
when they were in charge before the U.S. attacks in 2001. <clears throat> in other words, the Taliban has taken over Afghanistan in the same way they did before America ever went there. The U.S. hadn't meant for the Taliban office in Dola to be only a venue for a new round of talks on and end the war in Afghanistan. That's worded badly. The Taliban opening looked very much like a government in exile. The Karzai government was annoyed that the U.S. and the Taliban had scheduled talks without even notifying Kobol. Karzai's government felt as irreverent to negotiations on post-war Afghanistan as they soon will be on the ground. It seems strangely like Paris in 68, where the U.S. met with the North Vietnamese representative to negotiate a way out of the war, which claimed 60,000 Americans and many times the number of Vietnamese. What he's saying in the article, and again, you're going to want to check it out. We've done nothing in Afghanistan. We did kill some of the people who were uh, in favor of the 911 attacks. But we did not stop the, their children, if you will. The next wave is now flying the Taliban flag in Afghanistan. I agree with Sarah Palin. And this is what we should do with the Middle East. Sarah Palin had the best sentence ever. Listen, best analogy, best, just listen to this. I, I'm not, I could take her or leave her, but when she's right, like the drill baby drill thing, when she's right, she is right. Syria, she said, well, both sides seem to say that they're killing each other for the good of Allah. So maybe we should let Allah sort it out. Boom! That's a correct view. All right, last thing I wish to get to, and this is on Rush Limbaugh. When Rush Limbaugh is right, he is unbelievably right. The man has an intellect and a, and a mind. Like he can, if you watch him uh, when he's doing his um, radio show, he's not using the net for these facts that he just boom, 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 boom. I mean, he's using the net some, but these facts are in his head. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. He is very, very smart. The trouble is, he is a diehard Republican, and he cannot see past that. And that takes his logic and brings it down to a little bit less than the average person that you meet on the street. Because he takes a great mind and comes to very uh, ridiculous, boneheaded solutions. But when he is right, he is right. I'm going to let you uh, go and read the article itself. But what he's saying is that in terms of a successful president, Obama hates America. He wants everything that the Constitution supports to be destroyed. He wants to turn America into a communist nation. He has said so time and time again in a myriad of different ways. He hates the First Amendment. He hates the Second Amendment. He hates the Fourth Amendment. He is a communist. Therefore, the destruction of the nation, the economic woes that we have, the senselessness that is the printing machines that is making and devaluing our money, all of this is leading to the destruction of the U.S., which is what he wants. So in those terms, he is arguably the most successful president perhaps that's ever lived because he even has people in the opposing party doing his bidding. Everything he wants he gets, his scandals evaporate, and he gets to destroy the country. And make no bones about it, that is what he wants to do. That is what he said that he wants to do. Having said that, I'm going to go to this real quick, and he's right. He's getting everything he wants, Limbaugh continued. It, He's transforming his country in ways that no one ever thought possible. He is succeeding at every turn, and he has a scandal pop up at just the right time. Every moment, some big transformations taking place so that we're all distracted. Everything the guy wants is happening, one way or the other, sooner than later, later than sooner, whatever. Nobody's stopping Obama. Nobody's stopping the Democrats. They're getting everything that they want. 
They're getting everything they want with the Republican Party going along with most of it. Now, if your definition of successful president or a failure of a president is somebody who is making a mess of things, yeah, then he's a miserable failure. But from his standpoint, Obama's objectives, his goals, Rush says, I'll bet you Obama in private can't believe how easy it's been. I bet you that when and he, I bet you that when he and Attorney uh, General Eric Holder and Valerie Jarrett and the rest of them get together, they laugh and talk about how easy it has been. Yeah, this isn't an accident. America is being destroyed because Obama wants it to be destroyed. He said that he was going to fundamentally change our nation. His words, not mine. Well, the fundamentals of the nation is the Constitution. So if you are going to fundamentally change the country, then you are going to change the Constitution. And this idiot's getting exactly what he wants. And how do you stop it? You stop it by not voting Republican or Democrat. You stop it by voting Libertarian. All right, friends, you are listening, or at least independent, you are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. It is Sam I.B. DeGangie signing off. Make sure you check out the media speaks. Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself posting nonstop all the time. Yours truly has an article in submission going up at the Activist Post. And it's on GMOs and a poison that is cola. So make sure you check that out. Click on it because uh, I'm in the running to win. And it's based on uh, view count. So go to the Activist Post. Look up my GMO article and please click on it. <coughs> If you can't find it, let me know, and I will let you know the moment it goes up. Last two things. Please donate to my show if you can. You donate to me, and I buy gear to make this a better show. And lastly, Dana Mowgli Christ. Uh, she runs the Charity Connection. Guys, she's got lung cancer. Go to the Charity Connection. Donate to Dana Mowgli Christ so that we can get her back up on her feet. She can get back to doing what she does the best, which is raising money and saving all of our lives. Good night, friends. God bless.